All right. Awesome. This meeting is now officially being live streamed on Facebook. What is up, beautiful poets? Thank you so much for rocking with us tonight, for coming through the word is right. Uh, hopefully my video will even out here in just a moment and I won't be wonky. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the word is right. Last chance cash slam for the month of November. Well, technically for the whole year of 2021. Uh, just participating in, in any of the slams throughout the year automatically gets you on board for the Grand Slam. So every cash slam that we do, we take a portion of those uh, entry fees and we roll them to the end of the year and uh, allow the poets to compete for some extra money. So we're super, super excited to have everybody here tonight. Um, we got, of course, our wonderful, lovely Ma Dukes is in the house. Ma Dukes is back. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. <laughs> we got Chance on Bird. We got MD Live. Cassandra is free. Christina Ivy is in the room. Deadpan Lizzie. Doc Janning is here. Elaine Hill. Erica Renee Land. Frog Corpse is here. Jenny Jules. Lorenzo. Marianne Peterson. Melissa May Dunn is here, y'all. Myra's. Uh, we got Nancy Helgeson, Nicole, Poet Has Spoken, Thomas, Connor, all of you, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad and honored that you are spending some of your evening with us. All right, so tonight, uh, we got our cash slam. If you have not signed up to do the cash slam, it is $10 and that is payable to Ma Duke's Poetry on Cash App. If you do not have Cash App, we can arrange PayPal for you. Uh, that is the only other way because carrier pigeons way too slow and we don't have Venmo. Uh, so definitely get, get that stuff to us. If you're not sure if you want to slam or not, just hang out in the room, get a feel for the vibe. Uh, we'll go over things and um, and, and, and you can make that decision. We're gonna do an open mic list. We're gonna take 10 uh, on this open mic list. Uh, you have three minutes, uh, open micers. So don't like give us your 10 minute monologue, please. Let's like kind of try to keep it within the time allowed because we, we wanna get to our slammers. And uh, tonight we have four judges, five judges, excuse me, five judges. We have Nancy Helgeson from right here in Albuquerque. Uh, we have Doc Janning, Chance on Erica Renee Land and Jenny are, are our five judges tonight. When we get ready to start the slam, I judges, I will go over all the rules. I will go over everything for you slammers tonight. Uh, so don't worry, I'll cover all of that. I'm not gonna do it now because we got some poetry to listen to and it'll go out, you know, you might forget. So <laughs> I'm gonna wait until right before we actually start the slam to go over the rules for that. If you're new to slamming, I, you kind of want to know what what is it generally? It's a competition among, amongst spoken word artists where you get three minutes to perform a piece and five people who know maybe a little bit about poetry, maybe a lot about poetry, maybe they don't give a shit about poetry, are going to judge you. Yes, they're going to judge you and your work, but fuck the scores, right? Uh, the, the only reason we need scores is to determine a winner, uh, and that will happen this evening. All right, but if you don't slam, you can't possibly gets into the grand slam so you know if you're not sure if you want to do it yet um and you have a monster piece you write between now and then too bad so you got you got to get at least qualified right now we have um who all do we have on the list for slamming ma oh you're muted You're still muted. You're muted. Ma, you're muted. Oh, can you hear me now? No, I got you now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. So we have Melissa May Dunn, Christina Ivey, Cassandra is free, uh, Marianne Peterson, and the poet has spoken. Awesome. So we, we have five, y'all. So, you know, get in, let's go. Um, and then right now currently have five for the open mic, Doc Janning, Chanson, myself, Deadpan Lizzie and Anthony Harris. MD live, MD, you're not gonna do this slam? 
Wow, that's crazy. Well, Ma, Ma um, since I'm going to be the SAC poet, do you, you can totally open the open mic when we get started as well. Uh, so ground rules for tonight, at least for the open mic portion. And we have six spots open in the open mic portion. Uh, so, well, five. So if you would like to get on that list, then please, you know, again, let us know. Tonight, three minutes for the open mic. I mean, I'm not gonna buzz you or ding you or be an asshole and mute you, okay? But please, please, please <laughs> don't do a 10 minute monologue. Uh, there is, um, <laughs> this is a, a poetry open mic. <laughs> Anything could happen. You can say fuck and shit and dick and pussy and all that great stuff. So you're not censored by any means. Uh, please understand that you're not, that you don't have to use a trigger warning here. All right. But if you choose to use one, we champion you for that. Uh, so it, that's up to you. That's a personal decision. Please uh, do what you need to do tonight to take care of yourself, uh, to make sure that uh, if something does come up that you um, are equipped for that. That. Also, um, I lost my I lost my thought. Oh, um, it oh, it came and it went again. Um, okay, it's this has been a very long day for me. It's it's a little crazy. Anyways, um, if I feel you are a threat to anyone in this room whatsoever, you will be gone, baby, gone, and not allowed back in. We don't put up with any type of hate speech whatsoever. It's a free speech zone but it's not a hate speech zone, right? And so keep that shit to yourself. That's not going to fly around here. Uh, and I will not warn you. I'll just kick you the hell out. Uh, so please don't bring any of that crap and BS into this platform. This is a safe space. All right. So we're going to open up with the open mic. Ma Dukes uh, is going to break the ice on that. Then we have Doc Chanson, Deadpan, and MD Live. Uh, and then we will jump into our slam. We'll go over the rules for that and give all of the rest of you an opportunity to decide if you want to slam and the rest of those um, uh, late comers to trickle in. Uh, if you have any questions or need anything, feel free to message me in the chat, uh, either publicly or, or privately or Ma Dukes. The chat is for your convenience. It is not for you to exploit or to misuse in any way. If I find out that you are uh, abusing the chat, you will be X and gone. I don't care. Uh, so please, you know, let's be adults tonight. Uh, let's take care of each other and, um, and just don't be an asshole. All right, my Dukes, you ready? Absolutely not, but let's go anyway. I Absolutely. <laughs> As many of the community knows, I, I, I've been kind of absent and silent recently. This is actually the first poem I've written in, in months, really serious poem that I've written in months. Hey, you. Yeah, you. In the mirror looking back at me, looking out at us, where am I looking in at you? I don't wanna look right now. Do you? Guilt and shame ravaged eyes staring back at me, at you. What has become of us? We have become a ghost, a shadow watching life pass by pass us by, floating in a haze of depression, a briny sea of self-doubt rages storms against backdrop of inner self, your inner self. Battered about between what could be and self-sabotage along with procrastination. You know it as well as I do. Mental health feeds physical health, and you need help in both departments. A lifetime of teardrops filling an ocean of regret, an erosion of the white sandy beach called hope. Where has mine gone? Do you still have yours, or is that ours? You've lost yours too? How do you find hope again? Do you even know when you lost it? Well, let's see. Would that be when you lost your home or when you were penniless? 
No, we've been there before. When you lost your love, well, maybe, or at least that is part of the start of, but I, I think it was when that last ditch hope for acceptance got dashed by success. Were, <clears throat> what do you mean dashed by success? Words on pages recited on world stages brought disappointment and silence where love was needed. Sucked being 55 with mommy issues, needing something you will never get. I will never get. Staring back at myself, a reflection of imperfection, not the best selection, but by far the best choice finding my hope in finding your voice again. Hey, you. Yeah, you in the mirror. Good talk. <laughs> Y'all, I need your mics for Ma Dukes, everybody. Wow. Love it. Dope. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Dope, dope, dope. Love it. Oh, what a way to start off the show tonight so glad my deuce is back y'all she's back uh we we miss you my friend all right we're gonna keep going remember to keep your mics uh muted between performances please but unmute them and go crazy and be wild be wild cheering poets uh for the for the uh, performers tonight all right chance on you are next deadpan let's you're on deck okay so um i'll read six haku I'm supposed to be next. <laughs> well, oh, oh okay, snap. Yeah, right. No, you're right, Doc. This is why I need modules because my <laughs> shit is out of control. I'm sorry, Doc. Thank you for speaking up and advocating for yourself. Um, it, I make mistakes, you guys. But just feel free to tell me. I'm a really good listener and, and I, I'm a good student. So I'm sorry, Doc. I apologize. Yes, Doc, your next chance on your on deck. Okay. Supernova, distant memories scattered across the future, gleam through veils of night, each one a moment, a moment in time, a moment of love as we sail soul to soul through warm intimacy of ebon skies. Swirling, whirling on star wind wings, we waltz to infinite music of moons and planets stars and galaxies and comet voiced arias in the forever dance of love. Our souls soar into a new universe of exquisite joy and bliss as they embrace and enfold, entwine and enter each other, exploding in a supernova of ecstasy across all of time. And this is Bower of Dreams. Whispering stars surround our Bower of Dreams in quiet certainty of time. Warmth of love surrounds us neath deep lilac velvet of night on our world of two moons. And we snuggle to sleep, darshan in each other's arms, dreaming our future. Thank you. Oh, Doc, yes. You guys unmute your mics, please, for Doc Jenny. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's what's it's up. almost like you're a poet laureate. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which he is, if you guys didn't know. All right, Chance on. Thank you for your patience. You are up now. Deadpan, you are on deck. Okay, so I'll read um, six haiku. All right, number one. Long to be your knight, instead of wearing armor, my love protects me. Number two, you're my love candy. You speak joy to my taste buds. Your love is gourmet. Number three, sexual healing. Marvin Gaye really sang that, erotic, meets music. 
number four. I like Corona, no pun intended. That is, just give me cold brew. Number five. Um, let me see. Number five. Tears flow from true pain. Don't you tell me cut it off. You don't understand. And the last one. I'm a word junkie in Poets Anonymous. I can't stop writing. Thank you. Yes, chance on. Unmute your mics, y'all, for chance on. Love it, chance on. Chance on. All right, all right. Come on, Haiku right. King. It's been a minute since I've been <laughs> around. So how many are you up to, my friend? Um, I'm at, let me see. 1815. 1815 haikus. Yes. That's amazing. So for yeah. those of you who might be new, welcome to the word is right. Chance on bird has been um, gifted with the challenge of breaking the Guinness Book of World Records for most haiku. And it's uh, just over 10,000. And I said, well, chance on if you're going to write 10,000, I don't know, 800, whatever it was. Why don't you just write 11,111, right? You got the number thing. And so he is well on his way. Uh, he's almost 20% of the way there uh, to do that. So we're very, very excited for him. Uh, we're going to have a hell of a party. When you hit that 2,000 uh, haiku mark, let me know. I'll do another poster for you. And we'll keep celebrating you every step of the way, my friend. Thank All you. right, we're going to keep rocking tonight. If, you, if you're just joining us and you'd like to be on the open mic, let me know, please. Or let Ma Dukes, um, Gian Hill. Ma, it's easy if you change it. You put Ma Dukes also like in your name. That way people know that would be helpful to you. Um, and, if you <laughs> and if you would like to slam and have not got your entry fee in, uh, it's $10 to cash out to Ma Dukes Poetry. If you don't have cash out, we do have PayPal. So reach out to us and let us know. Uh, but that list is going to be closing uh, before we start. So you got to get that in. If you're watching live on Facebook, welcome. LaVon Robinson was on live on the Facebook. Hey, LaVon. Uh, if you want to come into the Zoom room, the link is in the live feed. All right, Deadpan, are you ready? MG Live, you're on deck. I am ready. And it's been, it's been a minute since I have spit on this platform, like months. So <laughs> happy to be back. Um, and I am in the erotic anthology. Marissa mentioned Touching Tongues earlier so you want to read some of my erotic poetry that's coming out soon and i'll um that'll be my link tree that i post later so anyway this is new shit it's called the capricorn of yorkville i wish i did not miss her i wish i did not feel compelled to text her not confident enough to walk the few avenues and blocks to tell her this or send to her a digital ping but there is no reason to hide behind my true feelings i miss her her scent her touch her intelligence the way she bites her lip when she is painting, how her brow bunches up when she is anxious, her advice, her kindness, her long blonde Rapunzel hair, her emojis, her smile, her bluish green eyes that made me notice her in the first place. I had to meet those eyes and I miss her. Some say it's because of recent life changes or what society may be wanting for me. I march to the beat of my own drummer. I do not care about what society declares normal or traditional though there is something so comforting about tradition to each their own. I am generally happy except for this one unfilled heart-shaped box that is constantly staring me down. Aphrodite refuses to let me have the confidence to give her my diamond, or am I simply stopping myself from presenting the family jewels to whom I believe is my soulmate? They say I am fearless, am I? This fear has been preventing me from walking the few avenues and blocks of Yorkville to tell her how I feel. When Apollo wakes with his extra hour sleep tomorrow, will he shine, excuse me, will he shine the sun on my heart to make me jog over to her? Or will I take the train to escape and continue to ponder my feelings as they rattle around in my scarecrow brain and tin woman heart? Though the role I need to be playing is the lion, he found his courage. So shouldn't the lioness be able to find hers? Thank you. Yes, yes. Gorgeous. Excellent piece. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so glad you're here, um, Lizzie. All right. 
Um, if you're if you're coming in the room, and I apologize for the delay. Every time I open a file on my computer, it delays my video. Uh, I saw Jeff Cottrell is in the house. Uh, my, yeah, sorry, Jeff Cottrell, welcome, Jeff. Do you want on the open mic list? Uh, let me know. If, uh, judges, you are welcome to read in the open mic. Uh, so if you um, are a judge, you're welcome to get on this list as well. Um, Thomas, Connor, I don't see you anywhere. Ty, what's up? Ty Black's in the house. Um, if y'all are wanting to get on this open mic list, the list is, uh, if, if, if I don't get anybody after MD, we're going to go into the slam. All right. Yes, Jules, got you. Jeff, got you. Uh, Jules and Jeff, I'm going to add you because we're only taking 10 on this open mic list. So I want to give everyone an opportunity if they want to get on to get on. All right. Well, that is the first half of the open mic. <laughs> yes, before the slam. And anyone else who wants to read when the slam is done, even the slammers, because we'll we'll shut everything down. We'll go into the after hours party. So if you're a judge, if That's you're a slam, it gets really real. Yeah, the, mm -hmm, the after hours parties are not recorded. They are not live streamed. So you got to get your ass to the Zoom room. Uh, but if you miss the first round of open mic, you can catch the after hours. And that includes the slammers too. You're welcome to read in the after hours. All right. Uh, so Thomas, is that you for the open mic or you for the slam? Uh, let me know. All right, let's go. MD Live, are you ready? Open Mike? mic for the open mic. <laughs> All right, Thomas, I got you. MD Live, are you ready? Yes. I, I didn't sign up for the slam because I've never done a slam before. So I just want to check it out to see how it goes. Well, all right. So MD, check it. Like, I think you should slam because you have a month to get ready for the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam is in December, but if you don't slam tonight, you can't possibly get into the Grand Slam. This is the I, last I, chance. I'll wait, I'll wait the next time. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. So please welcome up MD Live. After MD, we have Jules. All right, this uh, piece is called The Sound of My Silence, Dark Depression. Standing alone in the corner, a dark corner that is, there's pure silence, yet I can hear talking. It is my mind whispering into my ear and my mind is saying, wake up. It's time to get back into the fight. It's time to stand up and live your life. I try to turn from my dark place, but can't seem to get the nerve. I try to step into the light and release the pain inside, but I can't because no one knows of my suicidal thoughts. So I cry alone in my dark corner because my sound has been silent for years. I am hiding behind the mist of the night, knowing of no one and not caring for myself. I have thought of many ways to go. While I continue to stand in this corner, my life is a depressing mess. Where do I go from here? Do I finally make some sort of noise so that someone can hear my pain? Or do I remain in this corner? listening to the sound of my own silence for i feel i've already died inside but parts of me wants to live a better life a life without ptsd in peace yes yes MD live yeah. everyone that was hot that was hot MD. i just want if i can prada yeah, absolutely. I just want to say you're not alone and you're definitely in a safe space where people understand. I deal with PTSD as well. You're not alone. And you know, Erica Renee Land has the PTSD in me on Broadway or the off-Broadway play. Uh, and so, you know, she's incredible. She's got a lot of stuff going on with that. And um MD Live is part of the Word is Right family here. He has a Thursday night show that is to be announced, you know, when it launches. Um, he'll be doing um, Thursday nights, every other Thursday night, swapping with Blue and Lonnie. So Thursday nights at Word is Right is going to be a mental health forward 
uh, themed open mic. Every Thursday, we'll have something here. So we're very excited to welcome MD Live into our family. I mean, I've been saying that for like nine months, MD. You could have grown a baby by now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes. Uh, if you all are not familiar with Eric Renee Land, we'll we'll let the judges plug all their stuff before we get going tonight, uh, so yeah. that they have an opportunity to. Um... I haven't been on lately because I haven't been feeling well, but I'm starting to get back to myself. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're here. I I'll keep sending you links all the time. I'm like link send send send. I'll stay on you guys. Don't worry. I, I leave no poet behind. All right, Jewel, you are up. Jules, you're up next. And after Jules, we have Jeff and Thomas Connor will finish out the open mic and we will go into the slam. Are you ready, beautiful? Yes, I'm ready. I was supposed to judge, but once everybody gets going. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Judges can be on the open mic. That's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a recent poem called Plenty of Fish. People always have a lot to say about love. What they do not tell you is that Cupid's arrow, while in your heart, becomes a fixture, a fragment of a big picture. Love might hang his hat and his coat on that arrow, keep you holding on on a hook, line, and sinker, falling deeper. Love might call you home, but never come home. Love might light candles that resemble lighthouses that you built while you were onshore, while you were unsure of what he even looked like, because you probably walked right past him. This will come in waves and each one will knock you down and drag you out to sea. You see there are lots of fish out there, but you'll question if you're a catch or if you're a catch 22 because you haven't yet completed the things you ought to do. You're looking for love, but how are you ever going to find him if everything in your life remains a question? Meanwhile, that love, that one that you poured all your energy into, is ripping out the arrow through the exit wound, through your biggest muscle, no, not your heart. No, not your heart. Your ass. And while you're sitting on that, feeling sorry for yourself because it didn't last, you're bleeding into the ocean. You know you should be the ocean, but you're attracting sharks. You are preyed on while you think of that love that you preyed on. You either swim or you get eaten alive. If you could just learn how to float, you'll survive. Pretend you're driftwood, once dead, splintered, now sanded smooth, preserved until that endless ocean of blue love, that sea that pushes and shoves directs you to your true love. That's the end. Wow. Yes, Jules, everybody <laughs> unmute your mics, please, for this. Uh, yes, that was awesome. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. yes. Ooh. Oh. Sorry, yeah. my phone went out at one point. <laughs> I'm yes. reading it off. It's totally <laughs> fine. Oh, right? That's that part. I can't, my phone can't go out on that part. <laughs> Technology, right? I mean, I oh. think if, if we just expect adversity on a daily basis, when it rears its ugly head, you're like, ha there you are. Plug it, yeah. you know. And um, it's not. We're not good. We're, poets are not good at technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Thank you so much, Jules. Welcome, by the way. Welcome to the Word Is Right. All right, Jeff Cottrell, you're up next. We're gonna have Thomas Connor finish us out. If you would like to be in the after hours open mic, just put uh, open mic in your name in the chat, and I will put you on the list for the after hours after the slam. Awesome, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you? That beard looks good on you, my friend. I just okay. have to say that. Um, I trimmed. I trimmed it today. I trimmed it today to make it look less scary. It, it, <laughs> it looks very. It looks good on you. All right. What you got today? Okay, I've got an oldie that I'm sure a few of you have heard. Uh, it's called the Gym Show. <laughs> Disappearing slowly. Hello. Hey, Ben. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was Thomas Connors. Oh, shit, sorry, and then I interrupt you. Sorry, sorry, okay. like triple sorries all the way around. Jeff Cottrell, everyone. Okay, the gym show. Hey, Ben. Oh, yeah, 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 how's it going, Jim? Doing the open mic here tonight? Oh, yeah, 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 I think so. Cool. Hey, here's a flyer for my upcoming show. I'm doing it at the Theater Task Paragon Factory next month. Oh, yeah, 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 I really want to see your show. That's the, uh, the one-man Casablanca, right? Actually, it's the one-man Citizen Kane. It's called Declara Declaration of Principles, the musical. Neat, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 that sounds great. Yep, a lot of money and hard work's gone into it. 
well, I hope you can make it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to see your show, but I can't. I can't afford it because I'm unemployed. Oh, no worries. I'll comp you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. But the other thing is like, I can't make that night. See, I, I got to work. But you just said you're unemployed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm starting a new job in a few weeks and I got to work that night. But that's all good. The show's on for seven nights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got to work all those nights. It's a night job. Well, there are also weekend afternoon matinees. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that's the weekend I'm flying out to see my grandma in L.A. Well, the matinees run over two weekends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Saturday afternoons are when I wash my hair. But you could come on the Sunday afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sunday's when I dry it. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I really do want to see your show, though. I yesed it on Facebook and everything. Why would you guess it on Facebook if you know you can't go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just do that. It's a finger reflex. Oh, well, if you really do want to see it, I'm doing a full-length preview of the show next Wednesday at the Free Swan Pub. And there's no cover. You could come to that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been banned for life from the Free Swan because I brought in outside food. But I saw you there last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they told me this morning. The Free Swan's not open in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ran into the owner this morning at the, uh, the hair salon. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad, because I really do want to see your show. It sounds awesome. Well, I'm thinking of filming one of the performances. Then I might sell it as a DIY DVD. Maybe you could buy a copy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have a DVD player. Well, I'll put the video on my website. You can download it from there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't download videos. It always crashes my computer. I'll post it on YouTube then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't watch YouTube. It's against my religion. Really? What's your religion? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the one with all the jihads. Oh, and how did you get into that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From a video I saw on YouTube. Oh, well, I'm thinking of doing a short five-minute excerpt from the show in the open mic tonight. Surely you'll be able to catch that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've already had a lot of drinks, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in the washroom during the entire time you're on stage. Oh, well, you want to hear the funniest joke in the show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've got kind of an ear infection tonight. And it's made me completely incapable of hearing jokes. Oh, but you can hear me speaking right now. Oh, yeah, 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 loud and clear. Oh, Ben, you don't really want to see my show, do you? Oh, yeah, 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 of course I do. I love Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock didn't direct Citizen Kane. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, I meant uh, uh, Michael Bay. Ben, you don't have the slightest intention ever to see my show, do you? Oh, yeah, 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 I do. No, I don't think you do. Why do you keep saying you want to see it when you obviously don't? Just admit it. Stop being a phony little douche and be honest for once, okay? Okay. Okay. I'll be honest. I don't want to see your show, Jim. Thank you. Was that really so hard? No. I don't want to see your show because I think you're a terrible writer. Okay, whatever. I, and you're also a shitty performer. All right. And you're a pretentious asshole and a loser. Are you done yet? No. I also think you have severe social problems and probably need hardcore counseling. All right, all right, enough already. I hate you, Jim. That was the Jim show. Oh That's my amazing. God, Jeff Cottrell, I get it. You're fucking funny. I love you. I'm a fan. <laughs> that was so dope. Yeah. yeah. So dope. That's not a lot of cheering. What the hell? <laughs> no, that was that was excellent. Yes. Hey, I threw, con I threw <laughs> confetti up. Yes. You were the Jerry Seinfeld of course. I love that one. <laughs> oh, oh my God. All right. Uh, next up to the mic, we have a man who will not kill you with a flip flop because he doesn't know how to do that. Please welcome up Thomas Cotter, everybody. I don't like you right now, Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, um, <clears throat> this one's a, a new poem, uh, a, a fairly new poem, I should say. In his small brown eyes, I bore witness to his death. The universe pulling him into the void, mouth open, gasping, begging for life, a breath and voice he never had. A thousand apologies of what did I do just going to the store? He spoke fragile and labored pent. Blood dripping from his left side, it seeped. Sirens and blaze, the corner was lit. Slowly he disappeared into the void he went. 
the unknown back to the ancestors he went. And last breath, we all know well. Crowds gathered in dismay, seen from a do the right thing type of pause. They scream, they yell, Eleanor, Michael, George, Brianna, involuntary martyrs just on their way home and home. Yes, Thomas, Connor, say their names. We must keep doing that. Unmute your mics, please. Woo! Big T. Thank you, thank you. Big T, can I start calling you that? Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Because my camera. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and, and move into our slam. Um, Sir Lawrence, welcome, Sir Lawrence. Welcome, welcome, thank you, welcome. Thank you. you. Uh, don't worry. Out. We will continue with the open mic after our slam. We will go offline in the after hours. So if you're wanting to get on the open mic tonight, don't worry. Uh, we got you covered. We will handle that. We will, I will handle you. Don't worry. Okay. I got you. Uh, but first, we're going to take care of our slam. We have five poets in the slam. We've got Melissa May Dunn, Christina Ivey, Cassandra Spree, Marianne Peterson, and the poet has spoken y'all if uh oh, if i missed any more i'm trying to figure out who it is Hang so on. there's is there a, a handler or something you can you can inquire? well um in in the zoom it's lannis young but i think it might be miss zany because that's what yes. comes up on the payment on my paypal yes yes she is that is miss zany's name yes well then you can add her to the slam okay all right, Miss oh, Dean. Look, there it is. She changed it. Thank you, dear. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we got we we got a bunch of women around. The poet has spoken, and one, two, three of them are in the women's erotic anthology. So that's pretty awesome. Um, we let me go ahead and I'll make her a little card out. We are going to do a blind draw for the order each round. Okay, uh, I'll go over all of the rules in just a moment, but I wanted to give our judges a quick opportunity if they have any events coming up that they want to promote before we get going. I do want to give them that opportunity since they are giving us their time. So um, Nancy, do you have anything coming up that you would like to promote here tonight? No. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. No, not tonight. Thanks so. Okay, sounds good. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for your time and judging. Uh, Doc Janney, what you got coming up that you'd like to promote tonight? I have Second Sunday Poets, which is sponsored by the Cuyahoga County Library System. Uh, I'm the moderator for it. And our featured reader uh, for this month is Mr. John Fox, the founder of the Institute of Poetic Medicine in California. Awesome. I'm so glad you have a lot of things going for sure. Uh, and, and don't worry, I have got you on my feature list. All right, Chance on Bird, what you got coming up? I have a haiku workshop that I'll be hosting on December 5th. And how can people find that? Um, well, I have it on my Facebook page. Um, I can, let me see if I can, I'm gonna see if I can copy and copy and paste the event by um okay. link on, on the chat. And if you're watching live on Facebook and you want to get um plugged into any of these events that the, that anyone has here and um and you don't have that information, feel free to reach out to us at Word is Right and we'll get that information for you. All right, Erica Renee Land, I know you got some stuff coming up. You're muted. I though. actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> you no, don't? I'm no, I'm gonna. I'm working on my uh, on my memoirs that will be out at some point. So amazing! Yeah. If you don't have a publisher for those, then let me know. <laughs> I I might. That's okay. That's <laughs> a literary okay. I, I, a literary agent in New York. Um, I'm talking yeah. to her right now. So we'll awesome. See. You go, and you know what? When that happens, when that comes out, please feel free to share that on our platform. We want to get that out. We want to help poets across the board um, promote their events and things. So don't feel like you can't do that. We'll absolutely do that for you. 
Thank you. All right. And Jenny, Jenny, do you have anything coming up that you would like to promote real quick? Okay, hopefully Jenny's Jenny. Uh, okay, she said no in the in the chat. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So here at Word is Right, I'm going to go over um, a bunch of the things that are coming up to wrap up 2021 as we uh, go into the slam. Next Saturday night, same place, same time, different Zoom login. We're going to have a double feature featuring Nick Paleologos, our very own Nick P, right? He does poetry with Nick P on Wednesday nights, every other Wednesday night. And uh, he's going to be featuring with Tori let's the two of them are part of the next 10 books that we um that we have published this year those two poets together are amazing you don't want to miss that that'll be saturday november 13th and then november 23rd saturday november 23rd same place same time right here at word is right we have emily cordes and miro from new york city uh they're two poets again that we're launching their books this year the debut poetry collections those two women are the most intelligent lovely creative beings you'll ever meet please come and support them support their books it is going to be a really really great show uh i'm not sure when yet, did you say that was love november 23rd hang on hang on november 20 hang on 23rd is a tuesday um, not, not the 23rd it's the third the third where did my calendar go saturday the, the 27th, 27th. The 27th. Yeah, I typed that in backwards. Yes, I think I was looking at October when I typed 27th. No, the reason I, I, I caught that is because yeah. I have that on the 23rd. Yes, so Saturday, November 27th will be Emily Cortez and Miro. Same place, same time. I'm not sure if we're going to do anything on the 20th yet. Uh, I have not booked a show uh, because it's so close to uh, Thanksgiving, but we will see uh, December we're starting to work on as well. Uh, so at Word is Right, we have shows almost every night of the week. Uh, tomorrow, well, so Domo Beth uh, is ha we're having a little is having a break, so we don't have something on Sundays yet. If you would like, if you're interested in maybe hosting a show, reach out to us, let us know. Uh, but I would like to do something that's music forward. <clears throat> we have Moist Mondays. Uh, this coming Monday is Moist Monday. Poet Con, the Fishnet Poet, and I, we co host the erotic mic on the second and fourth Monday of the month. And that is a fire night. We don't record it, we don't live stream it. Everything is, is kind of um, behind the scenes, but it is a very sexy, erotic, explicit show if that is your jam. Uh, the first and third Monday, we have Cafe Generalissimo, and that is a uh, happy hour uh, type of show. We have um, Tuesdays, Quixotic Queers with Ma Dukes, Wednesdays, Poetry with Nick P. Uh, we have Thursdays, Lonnie. Quinones and Blue La Poetess do think in through Thursdays. The last Friday of the month, we have Ray Jane. She does a freestyle with Ray Jane. We are bringing back poetry in a movie night. Uh, we're going to be bringing that back in, in hopefully November. Well, we're in November, so we'll, we'll see. And then December. We're launching in December our very first One Poet show. It is a ticketed event with One Poet. We're going to be featuring Kemlin Bappy, Kemlin Tan Bappy. She's a Singapore poet who lives in. Um, in Arizona, you'll have an entire hour of personalized time with Kemlin Bappy. Uh, the tickets will be very inexpensive, like $5. They're not going to be a big deal, but we want to kind of create spaces for poets to make some money. Uh, and then you get to have that intimate space with them to hear more than even a 20 minute set. All right. Uh, also, the uh, the shows are coming out for the book release party. So the next 10 are launching their book Saturday, November 21st. It's 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. The poster, the event, all that stuff's already up on Red or Green Books. The book signing for that will be December 12th. That's a Sunday, Sunday, December 12th. The Women's Erotic Anthology is coming out Saturday, December 4th. That is the book launch on that. The pre-orders are already up on the website redorgreenbooks.com. Red is R-E-A-D. So if you have not had an opportunity to uh, get the books, uh, you definitely want to do that. The collections are available to purchase as a bundle as well as individually. All right, let's go over the rules for the slam tonight. If, if anyone has uh, questions uh, before we start, you know, please speak up or forever hold your peace is kind of my motto on that. All right. So here we go. Uh, each poet will have uh, 
three minutes to slam. You have a 10 second grace period. For every 10 seconds over, that is going to be minus a point. So you do not want to go over three minutes. Really try to keep yourself within that three minute margin. No props are allowed. I know it's, it's Zoom, it's a little bit different, but please no props uh, allowed for this uh, for this uh, slam. It must be original work, meaning you wrote it. You cannot slam someone else's work. It's got to be your own work. I will be keeping score. If there is someone who would or excuse me, keeping time. If there is somebody, maybe even Ma Dukes could be an additional timekeeper. I like having extra uh, timekeepers involved in stuff like this. I have a score sheet. All right, I have a score sheet here. It has the name of the poet, the, their time, their scores, and the totals. I publish these on the on our Facebook page after every slam, so that you know exactly what what happened. I like transparency in my poetry slams. All right. Uh, judges, you don't have to worry about the time. You don't have to worry about anything except for just what you want to score your uh, your the poets tonight. Your scores are going to be from one to 10 with up to two decimal points. For example, you could score them a 7.89. You could score them a 9.99. We're carrying it to two decimal places because I get too many ties and it's incredibly frustrating. So we really wanna go out to two decimal places. What you're going to do, judges, is you're going to type the poet's name. So I will be your sacrificial poet, you're gonna judge me on my poem. You will type Marissa and a 10. <laughs> just kidding. Like whatever you want, it's fine, it's legit. You can score me whatever you want, but you're gonna put the poet's name and then the score. And you're gonna put that in the chat uh, because we. I wanna know sometimes the judges, um, a lot happens in the chat. And so I don't get the score uh, or I don't know who they scored. So please put the name of the poet and then the score. That will help us uh, be able to track uh, actually what is happening. We'll look at the time. We'll tally the scores. There are five judges tonight. The top score and the bottom score get dropped, and we're taking the middle three scores. And that those will be added up for your, for your final score. We're going to cut from one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to cut from six to four, and then from four, you'll have your top two, uh, and then we'll, um, and well, I mean, they're not gonna go, but you'll have your first and second place, okay? So we're gonna go, well, we could do that. We could go six. Do you guys feel like going three rounds tonight? There's only six, it's up to you. Uh, we could go six, four, Cause okay, we'll go six four two, uh, that and that way we'll uh, the two the last two can go head to head for first place. Uh, it doesn't matter what you score tonight; you're all going to have an invitation to the Grand Slam at the end of the year for some additional money. Uh, audience, audience, please stay muted during the performances. If that's an issue, if I have to mute you all the time. Uh, I'll have some words with you. If it continues to happen, you'll be gone. Uh, so please manage your microphone. I know things happen. I know it's, you know, it's fine, right? Just don't make it an issue. But after the performance, please, please unmute yourself and go freaking crazy. All right, let's see. Uh, Nancy, are you ready? I just need a yes in the chat or an unmute so that I know you're ready. Nancy, Nancy Hogason, are you ready? Isa. All right, Nancy. All right, let's see. Doc, are you ready? Yes. Thank you. Um, Chanson, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Erica, are you ready? Yes. And Jenny, are you ready? Jenny. Yes, she's ready. All right, Nancy is not here. Does anyone else want oh, to volunteer? I'm here, I'm oh. here. Oh, there I'm you ready. are. You're ready, okay. I, Cause I was looking through the chat and I didn't, I was got to the end. No, I had, my, I had to go get my dog. <laughs> so okay. I, had, I had to get my dog for a second. Perfect, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so, yes. so, so judges, you know that you're going to type in the name of the poet and the, the score and uh and we're gonna we're gonna go all right so i have everyone's name in this
cup and my littlest one is gonna come and pick the names. So like, seriously, I don't have anything to do with this. All right, pick the first one. The first poet to go to my, and I'll be your sack, right? But, but we're, gonna, we're gonna draw for the order of go. The first one tonight is the poet has spoken. Who's the second one? Let's see, draw the second one. Richard, she's so cute. She like closes her eyes. I wish you guys could see her. All right, second one tonight is Dr. Christina Ivy. All right, let's see if I can pull her in the screen a little. Come on, Lisa. She's so cute. <laughs> Seriously, she's so cute. All right, third on the list is Melissa May Dunn. Fourth, we, we got a couple more to pull. This is the best way I find to, to do the order of go. Next. Uh, fourth tonight is Cassandra is free. All right, Isa. Oh, there's only one. Well, there's two. There's two. Going fifth tonight is Miss Zany. You are fifth, which means, of course, the last one tonight is. Can anyone guess? Marianne Peterson is the last one to go tonight. All right. But we got to warm up the crowd. We got to warm up the judges. So uh, judges, my best advice to you is that whatever you score me on this slam, please, please, please use this as the uh, gauge for how you're going to judge the rest of the poets tonight. Don't, uh, please do not uh, do score creep, right? <laughs> when you creep, that is not cool. And we want to keep it even because that's the rule. And so, yeah, if you judge me like a, like a four, that's okay. But just make sure that you're carrying that through the rest of the night tonight. You guys ready? Judges, you ready? Room, are you ready? We're going to bring the slam poem. As soon as you start talking, uh, slammers, I will say mic check, mic check. We'll go check, check. Can you hear me? I'll give you a thumbs up. As soon as you go, we go. All right, here we go. Mic check, thumb up. Dear depression, fuck you. You forced me into a basement prison, no light, no air, a kidnapped kid, weighted chain around my neck, grown to a woman in the dark, so long now that light is pain. Fuck you entitled elitists who think a woman has no rights to her body, to her health care, to her sexuality. Her body paying the bills, her brain paying the bills. Someone's got to step up. Someone's got to provide. Stop hiding behind your morals. Stop telling us we are sinners. We are survivors. Dear gangs, fuck you. Stop taking our children, making them into gang banging babies with hate. So much hate fill their head with. Don't know what they're, I dropped my line. <laughs> Yes, punish me for that, judges. Dear gangs, fuck you. Stop taking our children, making them into gang, bang, gang banging babies with guns. Fill their head with such hate. Don't you know they're just kids? Our kids. Dear banks and predatory lenders, fuck you. Fuck your fees in tiny print, robbing the poor of their rent money, food money, diaper and formula money. Fuck your inept explanations, expectations the consumer won't know they're getting ripped off. Dear drugs and drug dealers, fuck you. Fuck your claws shedding through the veins of our loved ones. Fuck your grip on their mind, on their bodies, on their love that forgets family. Fuck your toxic tonic invading their bodies and stopping their hearts. Fuck you prescription drugs too. Fuck your fake face pill bottle safe to take me, eat me, drink me, shot in the head eventually, self-inflicted, but was it really? Was it you making the choice or the addiction that grew unbeknownst to you? So fuck you addiction and fuck you suicide too. Too many people gone too soon, too many funerals, too many flowers, too many broken hearts, too many tissues, too many tears to drown in until death chooses me too. Thank you. Yeah, I'll take 
Good job. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Yeah. That's my two minutes left. Yes. Yeah. All right. Judges, please give me your scores. And uh, I, I won't take it personally. I draw my line. All right. Remember, fuck the scores. They don't matter anyway. Uh, all right. Marianne's coming back in. All right. The first poet up to the mic tonight is the poet has spoken. Let me get my, uh, let me get my timer re-cleared here, okay? All right, so poet, I will say mic check, give me a thumbs up, or excuse me, you say mic check, I'll give you a thumbs up. When you go, we go, good luck. Mic check. You've been lost for so long, filtering your truths away from the world. But if just, just if you were able to adjust your filter, you may look beautiful to you. Instead of a facade for the world, can you take what you see in the mirror or does it scar you? Why are you afraid of the truth? Beautiful is in the be in the eye of the beholder, but you told yourself there's no beautiful in what you see, unless you adjust to the correct filter to filter the natural flaws in you. Why can't you just believe in what you see? If you are able to adjust your filter, you may grow. You may blossom into a beautiful rose bursting through the concrete but you don't see the strength that you possess unless you adjust the filter to appeal to someone else's eyes. How about you change your view of you, adjust your filter to none, to embrace the true you, to embrace the beautiful person God made you. He made you filterless. So be at your best. That's what you could be if you were able to adjust your filter. You would be able to accept me like I am able to accept you. If you were able to adjust your filter, hurt would hurt. And it would be able to get out of your system. Instead of you filtering it away from you, the filter stops you from seeing the real me and me from seeing the real you. If you were able to adjust your filter, you would be able to show the true you. So please, adjust your filter. Boom. Yes, yo, yes, I'm you, sir. Sir. The galaxy yeah. of beauty yes. has yeah. spoken. All right, all right. All right. Yes. The Lord has spoken. Ooh, all right, judges, please uh, drop your scores in the chat and uh, I will tally them up. Uh, so the scores for Marissa Prada in the slam, uh, I have not calculated it yet, but I'll go ahead and read them. Uh, from lowest to highest is an 8.5, an 8.75, a 9.0, a 9.35, and a 9.89. We say fuck the scores. The scores don't matter. The highest goes, the lowest goes. So I don't know what that is. And you know, I really think you are very generous with the scores, judges. Thank you so very much. Uh, that made my night. All right. Uh, next up on the list, we have Miss Christina Ivy. Uh, like I said, poet, you'll do a mic check. I'll give you a thumbs up. When you go, you, uh, you when you go, we go. Y'all keep your mics muted, please. Thank you so much. Mic check. The coral pear, she says, and that mink kimono. Yeah, that's the look. I instinctively know how to pose, but I don't do this. <laughs> I don't put my body in fancy things and show it off. I'm giggling. <laughs> she snaps the photo as I twirl around chiffon enclosing me as I grab the phone to see what she's created. Her eye, my ass, <laughs> these lavish layers of lace. And I immediately hand it back before it falls. My body 
starts to tremble. It begins in my hands. It always begins in my hands. It makes its way up to my chest, that tiny yet powerful ball in my throat tightens and tears stream down my face and able to catch my breath, I collapse. How was I triggered so hard by a picture that I willingly took? I beg her through puny grasp to delete them, please, I say. These cannot exist. I am a Pisces with a pension for phantoms and a PhD. I am in my brain far too much to think about my body. So when I see pictures of it, it feels alien. Some other planets mutated making something that belongs in deep space. Sure. <laughs> Put me in a dark matte lipstick, a smoky eye, my hair dyed some outrageous color, and I will Snapchat filter my way into your spank bank, but make me be real. Peel away the sheets that I tucked in to cover up each of my insecurities and I unfurl into a million pieces of pillowed shame. And that is why I have so much ink on my body. I have paid a modern day Picasso to decorate my skin and make this prison feel a little more like a home. But no amount of wallpaper will correct the foundation. How many layers of paint does it take to stop the walls from closing in? Yeah. Oh, that was very deep. Hi, me, everybody. Hey. Hey. Yo, that hit go. hard. That hit really hard. Beautiful, beautiful. Judges, Bars. get me the scores for Miss Christina. All right, scores for the poet has spoken from lowest to highest. They are an 8.55, a nine, a nine. A 9.2 and a 9.8, drop the highest, drop the lowest. Your score, the poet has spoken, is a 27.2. Give it up for the poet. Woo woo! Poet has spoken. Yeah. Uh, it's a good, good first score there, my friend. All right. Yes, we're going to we're gonna rock it out tonight. Um, I'm going to pull in Christina's scores and calculate that as we welcome up our next poet to the, to the mic here. Remember, please keep yourselves muted during performances. Mic check. I give you a thumbs up when you go. We go. Good luck, poet. Mic check. The black hole makes a confession, an excuse, and a joke. Cold. The scientists, the movie producers, they all imagine me cold, but I know heat. Can even conjure it myself given the right tools, care, attention, affection, passion. If you shiver here, if you hunger here, I have to question what you brought inside to feed the flame. Need. It can be such a tricky thing. I didn't mean to need too much. I didn't mean to have this pit inside me, aching, loud, stains all the good furniture. I didn't mean to relax too far, give you too much to hold. I keep unpacking and there it is, all this ugly past running under the doors, killing the neighbors, sunflowers. I don't know why the winter inside me won't end. Maybe we get stuck in whatever season we were plucked in. You ever hear the one about the black hole in the china shop? She breaks everything and swallows up the shards so she can have this sharp edge of memory to cut herself open. 
to remember the sound of the shatter. They say there's no sound inside a black hole, but just press her to your ear. You can hear the break. It sounds like laughter. Hey, wow. hey, very good. Wow. Whoa. Oh, wait, y'all on mute your mics, please. For Melissa May Dunn. I love the cat appearance, too. That was great. That was good. Hot damn to it. All right, judges, please give me the score for Melissa. I forgot to mention the poet has spoken had a time of two minutes and five seconds. All right, uh, scores for Miss Christina Ivy. Christina Ivy had a time of two minutes and 55 seconds. Her scores from lowest to highest were an 8.8, .8, a 9.3, oh, excuse me, an 8.8, .8, a 9, a 9.3, a 9.55, and a 9.85. Give it up for the poet. Fuck the scores, right? Woo! Score matter unless you want to win. Uh, <laughs> drop the lowest, drop the highest. That brings your total uh, tonight to 27.85 for your first poem tonight. All right, uh, judges, yep, please give me Melissa's scores. Cassandra is free. You are up next. Uh, after Cassandra, Miss Zaney, you are on deck. Remember, poets, uh, where is Cass? Cass, there you are. It's coming. You could do a mic check. I'll give you a thumbs up. When you go, we go. Everyone keep your mics muted, please. Mic check. Body yaddy 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 Body yaddy 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 Body issues like hating my image. Picking apart every blemish like is my stomach too fat but too flat? Cause you know black girls but small behinds where they do that at? I do not love my love handles. I cannot handle having to jump into my jeans. I blame my jeans like my mama ain't fine. Messes with my self-esteem because I can picture back in the day when my body yaddy yaddy was all the rage. But now the Polaroid makes me paranoid. See the camera flash makes my anxiety spaz because I used to just be crazy about me. But now my body yaddy yaddy is bipolar like my weight is always up because I'm always down to eat my words when I say things like I'm gonna work out tomorrow but see every day has a tomorrow so tomorrow never really comes so now I suck in my pride and my stomach until my clothes almost fit so I almost look fit, skirt around the issues just a little bit, pull the wool over my own eyes about my size until I'm back in the mirror again, remembering when I had a perfect frame, the thought bowls me over because my diet has been on strike. So now I'm split between wanting to work on my six pack and wondering if my body yada yada is really such a bad rap. So I try to tell the negative thoughts to stay in their own lane because even with her imperfections and flaws, this body yaddy yaddy is still mine. So now these are not stretch marks. These are battle scars from wars fought hard, from childbirth being overworked, from sickness, from being hurt. My body yaddy yaddy has stuck with me through it all, been my best friend, this flabby skin and this double chin. So yes, I love her. These long skinny legs, these unperky breasts, whoever is with me but a lover dressed or undressed. I am an Amazon in her prime, the total package delivered from this self-hate, finally learning to appreciate all this body, yaddy, 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 uh. Hello. Oh. Yes, poet. Uh, Marissa lost her power. It's for the free. Moment. You did good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I don't know where she left off, but I'm going to try to pick it up and, and keep it going here with for her. Um, <clears throat> wow, well, let me go do some math now because I got to add Melissa's scores while Cassandra's comes in. Uh, let's see. Yes, we're working on it. She's messaging me on her phone. <laughs> Um, Chanson, help me out here, honey. Please note, yes, please note Cassandra's scores while I, while I, um, 
work out Melissa's scores and Ms. Zaney, you are up next. Okay. So let's see, Melissa, I dropped that. Sorry um, about the technical difficulties, y'all. All right. So then for Melissa, if um, we drop the highest and drop the lowest, her scores are a nine, a 9.23, a 9.15, a 9.8, and a 9.99. So if we drop the highest and drop the lowest, we got a 9.2. Is that right? Sound right, guys? Um, she's restarting her computer. Chanson, you have uh, Cassandra's scores notated. Can you send them to me in a, in a private message? And we'll let Miss Zaney go ahead. And... What about that? I was because I added up. I added them up and gave the score, but um, yeah, I can I can do that. That's that's great, honey. Thank you. No problem. Um, turn the timer on. Ms. Zaney, are you ready? Mic check and you can go. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. I had to yell for every time I stepped out every major aisle. I had to watch out for people attempting to smile since it would be a while before I could clock the fuck out of this godforsaken place. Don't sit down unless you punch out for a break Keep working unless you want out of this space. You're just another number. We have more people that can replace you outside. There's a line of people that want to slave out their lives, paycheck to paycheck, better recheck how your work is done or you'll be out on your ass. Shit, I regret going out my way to my day out of the home to do warehouse work and be left the fuck alone. I'm grown, I want to be out on my own, not another drone out of my mind. I lost it while filling out that so-called job application and my imagination to picture my life out of this job, out of this town, out of this so I can sip on drinks out of a pineapple while I'm out on the beach wishing you out of my existence. Yes. Ooh, yes, ma'am. All right, all right, Ms. Zen. Great job, great job. Yay. So uh, Cassandra's scores were a nine, a nine. A nine two five, a nine three five, and a nine nine nine. So we throw out the lowest and the highest gives us a twenty seven point six zero. I believe that is going to be. As Miss Zaney scores come in, uh, let's see. <laughs> Hello, that's a nice me <laughs> message. Let's see where are we at. That is the entire slam list from top to bottom. Um, I have to ask her for the other scores. Um, where'd she go? <laughs> Goodness. Oh, we got one more person on my dukes. We do. Melissa went. Christina um, went. Oh. Miss Mary Ann Peterson, that's right. She's uh, the, the wrap up. Thank you, Chanson. I appreciate that. Help no keep me in check here because my old mind ain't what it used to be. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. So, let, and uh, Miss Zaney was at 158, I think it is. And so, we're going to reset that. And we're going to ask Miss Marianne, are you with us? 
Are you ready to go? There she is. All right, you give us a mic check. I'll give you a thumbs up and you go. Mic check. Our final goodbye. The rest is coming soon. All your suffering will be ended. You'll be happy and healthy again. The spirit will live on, really reaching out towards your true home. Your physical body is weaker than when your cancer fight first started. Your mind and body are coming closer together in agreement to let go. I hope you go peacefully in your sleep. Your physical self will no longer be. I'll remember you. You were once strong. Your life has been long. I'll carry on once you're gone. I'll be like a rock, nice and strong. Positive will live on. Our negative will be washed away. I love you, grandfather. This is yours, my final goodbye. May sweet angel sing you to your rest. It's time to let go. Poem. Oh, nice and sweet. Wow. Great wow. job. I unmute yourselves and give it up for Mary Ann. Love it. Woo. So we got Marianne, 9.6, plus 9.18, plus 9.25, plus 8.99. So for Miss Zaney, her scores were a 9.15, a 9.6, a 9.98, a 9.25 and a 8.99, drop the highest, drop the lowest, 27.85, 27.90 is Miss Zaney's score. And we'll add up Miss Marianne's, so, oh. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Apparently she lost power, internet. Cass broke it all with her poem. She just broke Melissa, I mean, Marissa. <laughs> See how you are? All right, so give, I'm gonna pull a Marissa line, talk amongst yourselves while I wrap up these first round scores and I will be right back. Good job, poets. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I felt the passion from everybody, so that y'all got y'all awesome. She's coming back. I see her coming on. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that. My entire house went dark and we lost power. <laughs> bring it on. I can take it. Let's bring adversity and take it all the way to the bank. All right. So we're going to keep going tonight. Melissa May Dunn had a time of a minute and 53 seconds. She has scores from lowest to highest. She had a 9.0. A 9.15. I realized I just did this wrong because my time, but just hang on. 
uh, the, okay, so from lowest to highest, she had a 9.0, a 9.15, a 9.23, and a 9.8, and a 9.99, because they didn't want me to say motherfucking 10. Uh, so I will calculate uh, that total and have that at the end of the next poet who slammed. So Ma, did they've all went. Just I need your help. Let's let's get these scores together. So Mar Mar Melissa had a 9.0, a 9.15, 9.23, 9.23, a 9.8, and a 9.99. 9 yes. Christina's scores were. I we already got Christina's. I have the poet has spoken and I have Christina's. All right, well, all right, then Cassandra is free is a 9.00, a 9.0, a 9.0, a 9.25, a 9.35, and a 9.99. Okay. Miss Zaney, a 9.15, a 9.6, a 9.98, a 9.25 and 8.99. Okay. Awesome. Drop the lowest. Drop Mary, the highest. Yep. Mary Ann. All right. Ready for Mary Ann scores? Almost. Yes. All right. Mary Ann got a 7.55, a 9.1, an 8.0. A 8.3 and an 8.5. Awesome. All right. Give me um give me just a second and I will tally these up for you. Let me get my calculator out. Uh and Ma Dukes, if you want to do Marianne and Miss Zini, I'll do Melissa's and Cass's. Just drop the highest, drop the lowest. And feel free if anyone wants to check math, that's fine too. I'm I'm mad because none of my scores counted. <laughs> <laughs> We love you anyway. All right. So I have uh, scores for Melissa May Dunn. I have a 28.18. For Cassandra is free, I have a 27.6. Uh, were, were you able to um, get Ms. Zaney and Cass? I mean, Ms. Zaney and Marianne. Ms. Yeah, but Ms. Zaney has a 27.9. Marianne has a 24.8. What did you say Ms. Ms. Zaney's scores were? 27.9. She had a 9.15, a 9.15, a 9.25, an 8.99, a 9.6, and a 9.98. Nine so you dropped the 9.98, dropped the 8.99. She should have a 28 even. I'm going to go 27.25 plus 0. 0.6 is 0. 0.85. I apologize. I missed. Totally fine. I just added. It's, you're correct. Not a problem. All right. So we have uh, scores for all the poets for round one. Poet has spoken is a 27.2. Christina Ivy has a 27.85. Melissa May Dunn has a 28.18. Cassandra Free has a 27.6. Ms. Zaney has a 28. And Mary Ann has a 24.8. We're going to we're gonna cut this down from six to four, which means our top, uh, the top poets who get to go forward are the four moving forward are Melissa May Dunn at 28.18. We have Miss Zaney at 28. We have uh, Christina Ivy at 27.85. And we have Cassandra is free at 27.6. Thank you so much. The poet has spoken and Marianne Peterson for coming through tonight. Y'all mute your mics, please, for all these poets as we go into round two. Yeah, 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 round two. Round two. All right, let me pull these, uh, let me pull these.
these um, names and I will have Issa draw them again. Two, three. Issa Vela. All right, we're gonna have Issa draw for round two. Round two, it turns into four. I'm gonna get signs with numbers on them. One, two, three, four, five. So I can be like the poetic ring girl. You know. Oh, Majix, <laughs> can you send me? Will you send me this the times, please, for Cass, Mazzini, and Marianne? All right. So for the first first person to kick off round two is right now. They're all under. That's fine. No, because I post the score sheets. Just send them to me. All right. First person in round two is Cass. Cass, you're gonna you're gonna lead off round two tonight. All right. Let's see who's next. All right, second, second to go tonight is Miss Christina Ivy. Third, who's third to go tonight? Third tonight is Miss Melissa May Dunn, which means our last poet this evening is dun, dun, dun. <gasps> Miss Zany. I would have never guessed. It's Miss Zany is going to be finishing up our round around two tonight <laughs> she she's so cute she like ran down the hall squealing like she loves doing this stuff <laughs> we're raising the next generation of slam poets i promise you all right let me write y'all's names here cass christina melissa and miss laney all right that way I stay organized because that is my goal for all of you tonight. And I do apologize for that unforeseen um, power outage. It's such a pain in the ass because my computer is very slow to restart. All right, let me get my time, my timer back up. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Perfect. I right. don't know you were sending me frantic messages like she lost her power, hang on, like these are, it's our people, Marissa, they know, like, I know, I just wanted to make sure like that, to, as I like to say, feces occurs, you know, <laughs> you know I've had, I've had gunshots on this live before, but I've never had a power outage yet, uh, so, hey, you know, it's okay, let's all go, the range, all the things, you know, we, we're, we're <laughs> Thank you so much. The poet has spoken. Thank you so much for coming through, my friend. It was great to see you and hear from you. If you wind up coming back for the open out, open mic after hours, please come back. Uh, anyone who slams is welcome to do the after hours open mic with us. So y'all sit tight. If you're watching live on Facebook, you got to get your ass to the Zoom room, right? Otherwise, you don't know what's going on. All right. <clears throat> First up in the second round, we have Cassandra's free cast. You'll be, you'll be able to do a mic check. Thumbs up. When you go, we go. Y'all keep your mics muted, please. Good luck, poet. Mic check. For the people who speculate and tell me I don't look like what I'm going through, I guess I'm supposed to say thank you. But pain sometimes makes it hard to speak, see? It's the chronic pain for me. Nights where I can't sleep, can't breathe, can't eat, cause food always triggers it. Triggers more than people who tell me I don't look sick and so I must be okay. But they just don't see what it's doing to me because pain isn't always tangible. You can't hold it the way it holds you and it's not loosening its grip up. So there are days where I don't even wanna get up, just wanna wrap myself in a blanket, tell people what to do with their blanket statement when they state that I should be happy is not worse because there are days when the only thing worse than the pain would be not feeling anything and there are times when it's so crippling that the thought of my life ending don't actually sound all that bad it's the waking up in agony the headaches and body aches that linger like an unwanted house guest in my body my body once my temple is now crucifying me daily until I become a living sacrifice feeling forsaken so when people tell me I don't look like what I'm going through, I cringe because they act like you can't be both beautiful and broken. See, it's the chronic pain for me. Tired of explaining that imaginary and invisible are not the same thing. Tired of explaining that there are good days and there are bad days, days where I can run a marathon and days where I can't even run to my couch. 
and I am not okay most days because even on the days where it doesn't hurt, my anxiety stays up to remind me that the pain is going to return. And so I wait for it, staring out the window like Seely looking for Mr. because this pain is like a slap in the face. So I'm waiting for signs that it's about to hit. Now the effects don't exist to the naked eye. So outside looking in, I'm healthy. But if you could see how this pain turns me inside out, you wouldn't mistake my cries for lies. Say I'm lazy on days I need to just rest like you're still in bed. Yes, because there are some times where it takes an extra hour, day, week to get me started. Don't get me started when I tell you this is real struggle at times just to exist, to live with this, a chronic illness, no cure, just ways to manage it while trying to manage the damage it brings. But how do you manage when the only thing that helps chronic is chronic? Because my job is zero tolerance. And if I lose it, I wouldn't have the bread and butter for the butter anyway. So please don't tell me I don't look like what I'm going through. It feels more insinuation than compliment, more accuser than optimist. I wish I was optimist so I could transform people's way of thinking and treating people with an invisible illness. Say it's supposed to make us stronger because it ain't kill us. No, nah, what it does is weaken the spirit. And now this ain't a pity party, no woe is me. I just wish some things were different, like people not letting how someone looks decide if they believe their condition. So for the people who speculate and tell me I don't look like what I'm going through, <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah. everybody. Wow. <clears throat> you know, when a poet lands on two minutes and 58 seconds, you know that she's fucking polished like straight up i love it man it's a clinic and spoken word tonight all uh -oh. right judges she gets to say it she gets to say it <laughs> all right judges please give me the scores for cassandra is free next up on the mic we got christina iv after christina we have melissa may done y'all keep your mics muted remember you get a mic check thumbs up when you go we go good luck poet Mic check. You'll never see me wearing a watch. Not because I don't care for keeping time. Although really time is a social construct rigidly enforced by a capitalist society that tries to translate all of its resources into money, hashtag eat the rich, but rather, <laughs> I have an abnormal amount of electrical current flowing through my body. Watches will literally cease to function simply by touching the soft skin on the inside of my wrists. And though the idea of biologically being able to stop the time I carry sounds like a poet's wet dream, let me tell you about what it takes away. Like when I was little, I learned that sharks attack because the faint electrical current given off by humans underwater freaks them the fuck out. <laughs> and now I'm afraid to step in the ocean. I'm worried about treading water for fear the energy radiating from my body will sentence me to a one-on-one -on -one brawl with a great white. <laughs> At 14, my mother, who was careful never to buy me anything that would make me prettier than her, gave me a fancy fossil watch for Christmas. This sparkles like you, she said. Don't fucking break it. So when it shut down two weeks later, I wore a broken watch for two years until one day she asked me what time it was. Catching my electric lie mid spark. And at some point, attention became electric. Touch became a dangerous game of chicken. A brushing flicker of my fingertips can leave hair standing on its end. So just imagine what a hug can do a kiss. And if the person on the other end is an improper conductor, I shut down, I short circuit. 
So though I can arouse you simply by grazing you with my charged fingertips, I will never dive with you under the current. Rarely will I touch you. No matter how much time you think we have. Wow. wow. Ivy, you are yeah. electric. This is Christina Ivy, everybody. Unmute Goodness. your mic. Christina Ivy. That was hot. Woo. Yo, I'm throwing shit at my mic. That just, yeah. That was fucking deep. All right, judges, please give me the scores for Christina Ivy. All right, so Cassandra is free. You had a time of two minutes and 58 seconds on your uh, round two poem. Your scores from lowest to highest were a 9.2, a 9.25, a 9.7, a 9.7, and a motherfucking 10. Cassandra is free with a motherfucking 10. Let's go, poet. Drop the highest, drop the lowest. That brings you to a 28.65 for round two. All right, uh, y'all unmute your mics, please, for Cassandra is free for her scores. Fuck the scores, but we still got applause, right? Cassandra. Woo! Woo! Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yes. All right, y'all. Give me the scores for for uh, Christina Ivy, and we're gonna keep moving this soul train along tonight. We got Melissa May Dunn coming up in the slam. After Melissa, we have Miss Zany. Y'all keep your mics muted, please, till she is finished. You do a mic check. Thumbs up when you go. We go. Good luck, poet. Mic check. All the dude said, arm cocked over the back of his chair, leaning into the tittering ear of his friend was, great, another woman poem. <laughs> That's all he said, my hand to God. But my cunt growled ferocious over her straw broken back, burst through her sensible and clean cotton cocoon, swollen clit flopping out of the folds like the tongue of a timber wolf rabid. My vagina did the Grinch's heart a thousand times better, inflated first to the size of a watermelon, knocking the microphone clean off the stage, then elongated like a cock because she's always wanted to be a cock though in the newspaper the next day she looked more like a giant butternut squash <laughs> an innocent swollen gourd that promptly crushed the host and half of the screaming audience to death as they queued up at the back door trying to escape when her mouth finally opened she was the size of a hot air balloon the rest of my body flailing around behind her like a rag doll glued to a Goodyear blimp by the crotch. And like a douche seeking missile, she locked in on the slithering throat of the man who woke her from her slumber, spread her lips like the wings of a giant pink bat and swallowed that motherfucker whole. Didn't even bother to chew, but <laughs> she had teeth. Sharp, drooling things, all of them studded in gold with the words no is a complete sentence when she was roughly the size of a downtown building she had swallowed the venue four city blocks a dr pepper 10 billboard sign and four transit buses chock full of men telling her how pretty she'd be if she would just smile so she smiled and they stopped Smiling, there were SWAT teams and zookeepers and national guardsmen letting loose a torrent of bullets and tranquilizer darts, snipers set up on rooftops as she emptied entire fraternity houses into her mouth like sweet and tangy boxes of Halloween candy, hulked out in twat smashing helicopters like tiny toy planes, twat angry, twat smash. She threw back her head and laughed the deep and ancient laugh of beast man cannot kill because man has not taken the time to understand and when she finally finally felt like her point had been made she shrank quietly back down beneath my skirt and purred like the soft and gentle and valid thing she always has been so if you were thinking and i mean even thinking about rolling your eyes at just another woman poem i'd really take a second and reconsider brosif because Sometimes my vagina gets angry and believe me, 
you will not like her that way. Miss May, I want a copy of that one. Oh. <laughs> oh. I want a copy oh. of that one. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Y'all, get me, please, the scores for Melissa May Dunn, everyone. I, yeah, I, I've had the honor of, of meeting both uh, Melissa May Dunn and Christina Ivey in person. Uh, on multiple occasions, and they are just as incredible in person. Um, uh, just absolutely phenomenal poets. And I'm so blessed and honored that they are here tonight. All right, so Christina Ivey, your uh, your time was two minutes and 47 seconds, right? Uh, it's amazing, these polished poets. Your scores from lowest to highest were a 9.25, a 9.35, a 9.5, a 9.65 and a 9.85. Drop the highest, drop the lowest. That means your score tonight is 28.5 for round two. Christina Ivy, unmute your mics, please, for the poet. Clap for the poet, not the scores. Fuck the scores. Yeah. Yeah. All right, judges, please give me the scores for Melissa May Dunn. I will calculate that as we bring up our last poet for round two, Miss Zany to the mic. Remember, keep your mics muted uh, crowd, but uh, when she's done, we can go wild and crazy. Um, you could do a mic check, thumbs up. When you go, we go. Good luck, poet. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. If you are insulted when I say, go fuck yourself, it sounds like a you issue. Break down in a tantrum and go grab your tissue if you want to. Wipe the tears from your face, or better yet, wipe the cum from your genitals. Get off your fucking pedestal and listen up, buttercup. Fucks are magical. I'll repeat that. Fucks are magical, or at least mine are. Perhaps there are yours that feel subpar. I'm mindful about the ones I give away. So if I'm spreading any wisdom with anything I say, you may want to take notes or whatever floats your boat. Take care of yourself. Because when I clear my throat to give my advice, <clears throat> giving it more than twice means your attention is elsewhere. I spend my fucks on people that care. So go fuck yourself and don't return to my space until you have learned your lesson. <laughs> That was hilarious. Y'all uh, unmute your mics, please, for Miss Z. That note. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be like cheer. I'm not cheering. I'm just cheering. <laughs> All right, judges, please give me the scores for Miss Zaney. All right, Melissa May Dunn, your time was three minutes and one second. You're under, you're under the time penalty. Uh, very, very close there, my friend. Your scores from lowest to highest are a 9.6, a 9.6, a 9.68, a motherfucking 10, and another motherfucking 10. Drop the lowest, drop the highest. Melissa May Dunn score for round two is 29.28. God damn, y'all better unmute your mics and clap for that score. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn, they're bringing the fire tonight. All right, fire in the hole. <laughs> oh, damn. I should do an erotic poem about fire in the hole. That should be a prompt, y'all. Go write a sexy poem. All right. Uh, judges, give me the scores for Ms. Zaney, and I will calculate that as we get going. Ma Dukes, do you have any um, any promo things that you would like to uh, to do as I'm calculating the final scores here? No? Okay. Just remember, next Saturday night, we have uh, Nick P. And uh, we have Nick P. and Tori Letts are going to be here uh, doing their double feature. Very, very excited to have them. All right. Let me get my hand down the calculator here, and I will tell you. All right. Wow, this is a super close, super close one. All right, Miss Zaney, your time was 55 seconds. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That was a damn fun ride tonight. Your scores from lowest to highest are a nine, 
a 9.4, a 9.6, a 9.69, and a 9.8. Drop the high, drop the low. Your total tonight is 28.29. Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Miss Zany. Hey, come on, Zany. So our scores tonight, Cass had a 28.65, Christina Ivy had a 28.5, Melissa May Dunn had a 29.29, and Miss Amy had a 28.29. The two poets advancing are Cassandra is free and Melissa May Dunn. All right, well, those, the two of you are in Come the on. finals. I'm uh, going to wad up your little names, Issa. And I'm going to have her choose. What is it? What is it? Um, <laughs> the box of doom. <laughs> the joy of destiny, I call it. All right. This is for the final to see who goes first. First up, we got Cassandra is free, which means, of course, the last poet to perform in the slam tonight is gonna be, can you read it? No. Melissa May Dunn, everyone. All right, so uh, we're gonna regroup here. Let me put your names here in the final round. The one was like, uh, no, <laughs> not reading nothing. <laughs> She's so cute, right? She's adorable. All right. All right, here. All right, poets. Let me get your. Let me get this going here. Um, remember, crowd. This is the final round of the cash slam. This is for all the marbles. Just kidding. It's only some of the marbles. Uh, we got to leave some marbles for the grand slam. All of the poets who uh, competed tonight in the in the cash slam automatically get an invitation to the Grand Slam at the end of the year. That'll be the first Saturday in December. Mark your calendars. I will reach out to each of you uh, personally to make sure that you have the link and know when and where that slam will be. All right. Poets, are we good? Cass, Melissa, you ready? All right, here we go. Uh, let me get my, let me pull my uh, timer up real quick. Let me zero that back out. All right, mic check. When you go, we go. Y'all, this is the finals. Please keep yourself muted, but uh, feel free to be crazy and cheer for these poets between their performances. Mic check, thumbs up. When you go, we go. Good luck, poet. Mic check. Pastor raised her in Sunday school on how to pray, how to seek God in all things. He even taught her how to turn the other cheek. Spoke in tongues when he prayed for her so she knew her anointing was unique. I said the pastor spoke in tongues when he prayed on her, baptized her as she laid on her back. I can tell by the way she called on God that he was delivering her. But see, the church folk are having an easier time saving him than forgiving her. He'll have an explanation. The devil made him do it. She'll have character defamation. She's the devil in a blue suit. It's the norm. He'll profess his sins with his mouth, give stout examples from the Bible of Samson and David and how it's a shame that him falling into temptation should lead him to damnation. Get down on his knees again to orally repent from his sins. So now he's back in the pulpit preaching the same bullshit that he don't even practice. Because in the eyes of the church, he's redeemed. It's miraculous. Cause see, the pastor passes his pastures while the sheep get passed over, even during Passover shit. Have a good laugh over it in the back with the deacons, sneaking peekins at the teenage girls. They develop fast these days. They so fast now. So pastor lay his filthy hands on their ass now to pray for their salvation as they stand salivating and begin salutating our father, which art in heaven, but you can call me daddy. Hallowed be thy name almost as hollow as my sinful soul. That kingdom come 
and I'm about to, that will be done soon as I'm done with you on earth as it is in heaven, but they're heathen, they're heathens, heavy breathing, sanctified demons called a semen, holy oil, stand on holy soil, praising God, trying to comfort her with a staff and rod, odd how men of God always know how to get away with murder, cue the violas. Oh, the irony that he can both pray for her and pray for her, commune on her hymen. So his first time in, he's like, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Baptized her as she laid on her back. I can tell by the way she called on God that he was delivering her, but ain't no forgiving her because the devil made him do it. And she's the devil in a blue suit. It's the norm, you see, because see, normally the church will sweep it under the rug. It's closed eyes and shoulder shrugs like what happens behind closed doors is between him her and the lord because i swear on the bible the church can't afford no more bad publicity ain't nobody tithing 10 percent for that type of toxicity the church is a business so they say it's none of our business what he does with his privates and private long as he's smart enough to hide it he'll be back in the pulpit preaching the same bullshit that he don't even practice because in the eyes of the church he's redeemed it's miraculous <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, judges, please give me the scores for Cassandra is free. All right, to wrap up our slam competition tonight, uh, we got Melissa May done to finish us out. Remember, keep your mics muted during performances and uh, mic check, thumbs up. When you go, we go. Good luck, poet. My check. Content warning for parental death. A grief waltz is a box step. Pine, titanium, satin trimmed gliding, six feet of movement, or the stillness of a body kissed alive by incineration. Learning was easy. One morning I woke up still. Before the sun set on my limbs, I was a dance floor of writhing. A migration of movements, the bass beats and breaking, always the breaking. The grief waltz is not a line dance. Can play in double time, the steps went one. My mother's heartbeat, a stolen metronome. Two, my father's hand on the needle, ripping the record into silence, three. Me, undaughter. Have you ever watched someone dance a step for two alone? How the body translates the ghost. How each next turn is a conjuration moving through the flesh like an ugly prayer. The grief waltz is a compulsory shuffle. A marathon you can't concede. If you can't make suffering beautiful, you disappear yourself. Try it. Throw your body down in public. Greet the floor with madness. Weep and wallow and wail your loss into the faces of spectators. You can watch their faces evolve. From sympathy to pity, from pity to annoyance, from annoyance to anger, from anger to vacuum. Best to hide the burning with a smile to self-immolate in a flourish. You can't funeral march on everyone else's joy. So you move your feet. You hum under your breath. You look for anyone, anyone who knows the steps. Is it you? Do you know what I'm supposed to do with my hands now? Can I stop? Can I stop? The grief waltz is a body engaged in deception. It's silent on purpose, designed for distraction. Nothing about this is graceful. I need to say my people are dead more than I need to assure you that I'm okay with it. I'm not. You know, mostly I'm not. So I won't dance, okay? Please stop asking. Boy, you all are so deep, goodness. Uh, mute oh, your mic, wow. please. Give yeah. it up for yeah. Melissa. Yeah. May yes, 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 yes. Wow. Mm. 
All right, yeah, judges, please get me Melissa's scores, and I will calculate those as we get going tonight. Uh, so as we are, as I'm waiting for the scores to come in and talking and writing because we can multitask tonight, uh, we are rocking up on the one year anniversary for the word is right. Yes, we've been here almost a year and it's so exciting so we're gonna have a party in december for our one year anniversary we are going to invite back all of the features from this year to come and read at it as well as all the hosts and people who are part of the word is right family to come and read uh and and have an open mic that night uh so keep your eyes and ears uh, peeled for that. Yes, Jeff Cottrell, you are one of them for sure. Uh, we definitely were very proud and honored to be here, uh, to be on this platform. We're so grateful for all of you, for, for all your love and support and, and helping build uh, what has become, I believe, uh, an incredibly uh, fun and safe um, platform where, where poets get to just poet. And so- Absolutely. Uh, I'd like to thank all of the poets that have come tonight while, Mar Mar while Marissa's over there doing her little math. Thank you for sharing those intimate parts of you. Uh, Melissa, that last poem really hit, it brought me to tears. Um, thank you for sharing those emotional bits, all of you. It's been an amazing ride listening to y'all tonight. So I wanted to thank you all for that. Cass, you know, like that last one you did, that's one of my favorites by you. And you always, you know, you always rock the mic. Christina, it was amazing hearing you, all the slammers tonight. These poets have books out. They have books. I have them in my book box. I, I, I love reading. Cass has three, right? She's got a sexy erotic poem. Is she four? That's Cass right. has four. This four, right? Four. Well, how come I only have three? What? Because I, I just got the the other one just came out uh, maybe about a month ago. Well then, damn. Well then, damn. I need that fourth book, right? Because when I like to read, you know, when I when I showcase uh, books on Feel Good Friday, I like to do all of them. So please, you know, support these poets, support everyone. Uh, Christina has a book that's coming out next year. Dioma, uh, so, uh, yeah, 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 wow. I have right, to so, take a roommate just so I have extra extra money to buy all these poetry books. So you can book swap, Ma. You can ask to book swap. You have Ma Dukes has an incredible book of poetry out, uh, Epiphanies of the Soul. It's straight up, and Elaine Hill is here as well. We got the original ten in the house. So the original ten poets at Red or Green Books uh, are here, and they they're they're. They're so freaking special, y'all. So just please, please support poets when they have merch, when they have books. Just go buy their stuff, uh, please. That is the best thing that you could do. She's so humble. She needs to include herself in that. Oh me? Yes, you. Okay. okay. Yes, my book is available. Conversation. You beautiful. You beautiful <laughs> light in this world. Thank you. Like you're a poet and you're a publisher and you're a mom and you're all of those things. But I think the most special thing about you, my friend, is the light that you bring to this world, regardless of what you are going through on a personal level. You put that shit aside and you put these poetry things together and you bring a space and a light for people to, to come together. And, and, and I just, and it's just fucking amazing. So thank you. Thank, thank all of you for saying yes. Thank yeah. you for stamping your ticket and being part of this journey, right? Um, I'm very excited that this year we have 21 books that we did in our inaugural debut publishing year. 21 books. Uh, 20 debut poetry collections from 20 debut authors in the women's erotic anthology. I had 26 uh, next year to publish, including Doc Janning and Christina Ivey, who are in the room tonight. Um, I'm going to do Baker's Dozens next year, 13 and 13. And for anthologies, we have a Survivor's Anthology, we have a Black Father's Anthology, and we have a male erotic, uh, male and non-binary erotic anthology next year. And um, I and an LGBTQ anthology. Now those anthologies, like it, I must be self harming to do them. Like <laughs> it's, it's crazy rough for me. <laughs> but I have volunteers to help me this year, so it's it's awesome uh, to be able to do that. And um, 
and and we have children's books uh we're launching a series of children's books next year that is going to blow the roof off of social justice issues uh and people of color being represented in the children's literature category so we're very proud to be part of that movement next year i hope you all are able to come uh don't forget the uh cash slam uh, the grand slam in december y'all uh part of your entry fee tonight will go to that so thank you all so much for being here and supporting that let's get to the scores cassandra is free had a time of two minutes and 50 seconds her scores from lowest to highest were an 8.9 a 9.0 a 9.75 a 9.85 and a for cassandra is free melissa may done had a time of she's gonna do that and her whole screen's just gonna shatter and she's <laughs> It'd be like really <laughs> <laughs> it's not tungsten paper it's just like regular paper. all right <laughs> melissa may done had a time of two minutes and 25 seconds her score is from lowest to highest are a 9.2 a 9.8 a 9.8 a 9.85 and a motherfucking <laughs> done i get to say motherfucking 10 so Cassandra, your total score was a 28.6. Melissa, your total score was a 29.45, which makes Melissa May Dunn first place tonight. Cassandra is free as second place tonight. We pay two places on this show. So you both are walking away with money. You can't possibly uh, lose if you get to be in the top two tonight. And of course the Grand Slam, we have 150 added plus whatever. Uh, came out tonight. Uh, if there's anyone who wants to help sponsor that and throw some more money in the pot in December, we would love to have you. So congratulations, Melissa and Cassandra is free. Y'all unmute your mics, please, for all of our slammers tonight. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Everybody was. Everybody, Trust please me. put the social media handles in the chat and I'll share your information. Everybody. Um, oh, from open mic to slam, everybody Melissa, trust me. Yes, ma. Marissa likes to quote Melissa with uh -huh. how's it go? I say poetry Melissa May, this is my this is what I say. Well, Melissa May Dunn says poetry without distribution is bullshit. <laughs> this is exactly what I say. Melissa May Dunn says. So if you if you're wondering who the hell I'm talking about, it's Melissa May Dunn. <laughs> she she just won the slam. <laughs> I always say that. Yeah, if you guys are on Instagram, I do Instagram shows three days a week. I do Tuesday, Meet the Publisher, Thursday is an erotica, and Friday is Feel Good Friday, where I read exclusively books from other poets. So uh, come hit me up on Instagram also. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and break from the slam and move into our after hours party. Slammers, you are welcome to drop on the mic. Uh, judges, you are welcome to drop on the mic. Anyone who read in the first round is welcome to drop on the mic. Uh, we're going to move into that after hours party if you're watching live on facebook we love you we thank you but get your ass to the zoom room because you can't read if you're not here and we, it's after hours which means we shut shit down oh you know what we got to do we got to do the toast right because i end all of the lives with my toast so y'all got a drink real quick uh so so don't go anywhere if you're in the zoom room we're gonna stay right here but we're going to turn off the live and we're gonna turn off the recording so i want to make sure that uh that y'all don't think we're going somewhere i mean if you need to go you can go but if you if you have not then then here we go uh all right you ready all right uh live get your ass to the zoom room here we go here's to health and your company and one for the lasses Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain, for we may or may not ever all be here again. Mm. Thank you so much, everyone. Congratulations, Melissa May Dunn. It's the Cassandra's free. Woo -woo!